great to be back with you, uh, despite the difficult circumstances on the side. And per my email to the group, I'm looking forward to uh, being back there next week, although I will have to return here um, for the uh, my dad's funeral and um, and burial, unfortunately, um, on the uh, the tenth. Uh, but I'm I'm looking forward to to seeing you all um, and interacting with you in the classroom. Um, today we're going to be continuing our discussion of chapter uh, thirteen of Eugenia Chung's um, Joy of Abstraction and. Uh, specifically, I was hoping to review some of the material that we had talked about last time, maybe work to illustrate it uh, a little bit more effectively, but particularly talk about this prominent um, example of the structure preserving mappings that are the focus of chapter 13. specifically looking at um, something that's prominent within our world, which is these so-called C-sets or co uh, which are these functors between a schema category and what other category? Can anyone tell me what's all of these, these uh, co uh, whether it's from a mapping from a stock flow schema or a mapping from a graph schema, or mapping from a PetriNet schema, from a discrete dynamical system schema. The, the other end of that mapping is always a specific category. And what is that category? Category of sets and functions. Sets and functions, that's right, exactly. And these um, co-pre-sheaves or C-sets, um, provide us this way of specifying grammars, as it were, um, describing the form and encoding specific examples of, of, of what's uh, being characterized in the particular instances of what's being characterized in the schema. So if it's a schema for graphs, you have a way of encoding graphs or more precisely, um, uh, directed multigraphs. Uh, if it's a schema for discrete dynamical systems, we have uh, we encode instances of discrete dynamical systems. If it's a schema for stock and flow diagrams, we encode particular stock and flow diagrams. And the schema captures the kind of rules of within these constructs, like a stock and flow diagram, what can be connected to what. If I could abuse the Queen Signal, she'd be temporarily out of the Commonwealth. Um, so uh, we're going to be spending particular time on that today. But I did want to go over because it functors are one of those concepts that are often elusive at first for students. And they were for me. And then they grow on you. And, and you come to see that they fit in with this commitment category theory has to honoring structure, to capturing structure, and to abstractions that preserve, that, that describe this, or the character that are characterized by this structure, um, but can be treated in a more abstract fashion um, with mappings between them. So uh, I'm going to share my screen and, and we'll take a look at some slides, which I hope will better illuminate this. And I uh, just want to remind us that this chapter is on large worlds of mathematical structures with a particular rich focus on these mappings. Um, and uh, there's many large worlds explored. Um, for example, uh, the category sets and functions is one of those, or she talks some about uh, monoids, for example. Uh, as I recall. Um, 
And uh, for example, in the category of sets of functions, we have this unlimited number of, of infinite number of, of, of objects here. Um, and each object represents a set. And the morphisms here represent what? The morphisms from one set to another represent particular type of morphism, functions. That's exactly right. Yes. Well, when we have monoids, each of these objects is a monoid. And the morphisms between these monoids are what? They're monoid. Monoid homomorphisms. homomorphisms. Yeah, they're monoid homomorphisms. I know it says that, but they're 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 structure preserving mappings between the monoids. Now, now that's a mouthful, but as we'll see, it will have particular meaning. They're they're mappings between monoids that are true, that honor the structure of one monoid and and kind of reflect it often in a compressed or coarser grained way in another. But they're not just any willy nilly you know, splattering down of of the 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 elements of the monoid here and to to over here in some arbitrary way. No, no, no. They're they're very specific, nice mappings between these monoids. These mappings that that preserve, that honor um that structure of the monoid, uh, uh the source monoid. It just reflected, although in a often in a collapsed manner or compressed manner or abstracted manner in the target. Um, so for example, we might have a, a free monoid here on the left. And I don't know where my nice little dots went to show that there's arbitrarily many morphisms here. We kind of coarse grain that and we can imagine this is kind of a counter that could count up, but you know, we we can represent any number here and all we're taking here is the final bit of the number zero or one but it's a it's a nice mapping and we'll come back to this it's a mapping that's consistent we can either do something over here like add two numbers over here and then map over and that will is guaranteed to give the result oops sorry the same result as mapping over the fourth morphism mapping over the second morphism and composing them here there's this consistency it's like this thing on the right is a kind of um, simulation of this one, or that that's using the word in a in a no, very different sense we normally use in our group, but it it like um, characterizes at a cruder level what's going on here, but in a way that's totally consistent. You know, here we're only paying attention to the final bit. Oops, over on the left we're paying attention to the whole number, um, to the entire number. Um, uh, now. Another category that we've talked about is uh, where these are pre-ordered sets of uh, each of these objects. Uh, maybe it's um, with the less than or equal to relation, or maybe it's with um, with one thing dividing another, for example, or or maybe it's um, uh, one subset things being subsets of each other. These are pre-ordered sets, um, maybe not totally ordered. They're, they might be uh, partially ordered sets. And, and th this is a morphism between those sets, which are monotone maps. We'll, we'll come up to it. But, but all of these have the flavor that, you know, no matter what these, these things are, whatever structure is in them is preserved, is honored by these morphisms. Now the kind of weird, or the the kind of um, edge case, or the the um, extreme case of that is sets and functions, because the sets here don't really have structure. They, they have no element that's greater than another, or one that divides another. They don't distinguish one can get to another, or something like that. Um, and so these are arbitrary functions. There, there are tons of them. We need to win any two sets, but as we consider, for example, monoids, there's fewer. There's fewer of these mappings that are true to the structure of this monoid, because it can't just be any willy nilly, you know, um, splattering down of of these elements to other elements here. It's it's very specific, restricted, nice class of them, um, 
that that honor this relationship, right? You, you can either do things here, go over, or it's guaranteed to be the same as going over, doing the two things, the composition here, you're guaranteed to get the same result. Monotone maps, th there can be quite a few, but there are a lot fewer than there are arbitrary maps between these two sets, for example. Graphs, we could also arrange here. So we'll be talking more about these, but we could have a category of graphs and each of these is graph. And, and the morphisms between these are graph homomorphisms where one graph is kind of embedded in and maybe coarse grained by another. So maybe some of the vertices are, are that are distinct here are collapsed into one vertex here and 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 the edges that went between those vertices are self edges into that that single vertex and over here. So these again are not just any old mapping of vertices here to vertices here. No, they're they're mappings that are structure preserving that that honor that preserve that structure that are true to the structure here and reflected in the target category. Um. And we give as an exemplar of this last time, and I, I hope it was example this, I, I hope it was a, a clear example, you know, of a, a particularly simple example of a order preserving or structure preserving mapping, a mapping between this pre-order on the left and this one here, right? Um, where um, each of these dots, each of these objects gets mapped to a particular object over here on the right. And, and this one on the right is is kind of a an aggregate caricature of this, or it's a coarse grained caricature of the thing on the left. Um but it it whispers of the thing on the left. It it these things on the left, like these these uh are, are reflected over here just in a in a coarser way. So maybe this one maps to this one, and these three map to this one. But you'll notice it's consistent. We don't have any inversion where we have like this one mapped up here and this one mapped down here. And that's because we need to have this composition property. Again, we need to be able to either compose things here and get a morphism to this or map over. And map map over, and there's a self morphism here, and, and as there always is in a pre order, an identity self morphism, and you could eat, and then do that, and then take this one. Um, so so you need to be able to get the same results of 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 a morphism from from do we get here mapping it over, um, or or mapping it over and taking the corresponding morphisms here. And if they were reversed, there'd be a morphism, you know, if this went down to here and this one up to here, there'd be a, a route up here, but there wouldn't be a route here because there's no there's no uh, mapping that goes from, from here down to here. So you could, you know, map over, you could compose here, but when you map over, it's not the same as the non-existent routing from the, the map of this guy, which would be down here, and the map of to the map of this guy up here. Um, uh, the, the reverse one wouldn't have a mapping. Um, and it turns out this uh, applies in, in Haskell. So there's this notion of functors, and we talked about how functors last time map objects to objects, and they map morphisms to morphisms, but in a in a very specific way, in a way that preserves structure. And specifically, identity morphisms are mapped to identity morph in the source category, mapped to identity morphisms in the target category. So identity morphisms here are mapped to identity morphisms here for all the objects. And what's the other condition we talked about? What's the other condition needed to preserve structure besides mapping the identity morphisms to identity morphisms? It's what? Mapping. I've said it a few times now. You have to preserve composition of morphisms. So 
you can, you can either compose morphisms here and get a composite. This so you would compose H after F. We get some morphism from A to C. Remember that has to exist for any two edge to end to end morphisms. There has to be a composite. And part of the structure of the category that says what the composite is for any two end to end morphisms like this. So there's some H after F. And whatever it is, if we compose H after F over here in C, and we get this composite and we map it over to D, we have to get the same thing as what? We have to get the same thing as doing what? Map first mapping F over and mapping H over. So what I'm just saying, it's the same as doing F after a, FH. In other words, the mapping of H after FF here, composing those two over here. So they have to be consistent. In other words, it's like they're living in mirror worlds, although this one is often a collapsed or coarse-grained version of this one. You could do things over in this world and map it over. And you have to get the same thing as mapping over each of the things you're doing, H and then F, composing those over in this world, you're going to get the same thing as, as you would by doing it over here, mapping over. So there's this beautiful kind of preservation of this structure. The structure is captured in, in large part by this composite. Properties. So, you know, what's the composite of H after F? Well, whatever it is, when you map it over, it has to be the same as what's the map, what's the mapping of H after the mapping of F over in D, and then composing those. Can so D and question? C. Yeah, please ask a question. No, no, please. Uh, sorry. I can't see the chat uh, right now. Please. Your, no. uh, your, your means is uh, we have the same target and sources at the mirror. Say this again. Uh, uh, the, uh, um, your means is uh, we have the same source and target at the mirrors. Then we map the, them. Uh, you you like, said at the I didn't understand the last word at the mirrors. I didn't understand mirrors. at the mirrors. Like mirrors. Oh, that they're mirrors uh, of uh, each other. Uh, yeah. Well, we have the same quite, source and target. Your means is they're, they're not quite mirrors of each other, right? Like we'll see some examples, but right here they look like mirrors of each other, right? Like what's on the right looks like a mimic of what's on the 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 left, right? It looks like it's the same structure here, but it doesn't have to be that way. What else could happen over here on the right, which would be true to the rules of homomorphism, but not just visually mirror this. This one visually mirrors this one, but what's what's something that would not visually mirror it? Same behavior. What? Well, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it'll be true to the spirit of the homomorphism, true to the rules of homomorphism, but it wouldn't look exactly the same. What would be visually, yeah. what could happen here when you map it over, besides it just being visually kind of a twisted version of this over on the right, which it is right now? What else could this mapping do? What else could the mapping F, the functor, what else could it do besides just mirroring A in, in, an, in an object here, B in a separate object here, C it, in a separate object here? What could it do? It could have um, both A and B go to the same place, sort of like within exactly. the, the, the one that you showed us before, where those exactly. three different internal objects go to the same one. Yeah. Yeah, that one. That's right. They could be coarse grained in that same way. So uh, F of A could be the same object as F of B. And FF 
what would FF be then? If it, sorry, what would FF what would FF look like if FA if if F mapped A to the same object as it mapped B? It would be a morphism from same. like to itself, not the identity morphism, but a morphism to itself. Exactly, exactly, exactly. It. I love it how you said that. It wouldn't be the identity morphism. No, there, there is an identity morphism, um, uh, but it, it's going to map it to itself. Um, and in general, it won't be the same as the identity. Um, in general, it, it won't be. Um, I it could curious. also, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, no. Would yeah. The mm -hmm. Would the two identity morphisms, however, become the same identity morphism when mapped over? They would become the same identity morphism when mapped over. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, there would be an uh, the the target object because remember, um, it's not like we're and and this is a bit misleading. And I wanna I wanna head off this misunderstanding which bedeviled me for a while. It's not like we're creating these objects in D. These are pre-existing objects in D we happen to be mapping to. In general, there's many other objects in D here. There might be a zillion of them, you know? Um, might be a zillion and one. Might be a Googleplex. Might be three. Uh, you know, might be five additional objects, whatever. Um, th there's, they're mapping A. Oh, sorry. A is mapping onto some object. F is mapping A onto some object. It's mapping B could be onto the same object and that object will have an identity morphism and those two identity morphisms here from a and from b will go to that to that uh identity morphism in the in the target object they they will go to that identity morphism in the target yeah so go to the same identity morphism because What's the rule for identity morphisms? Identity have, morphisms, yeah. Have to mm -hmm. map to right. other identity morphisms? To other identity morphisms. So this, if, if A and B were mapped to the same object over here, it has to be that, that the identity morphisms map to that same identity morphism um, in, in the that target object. Hopefully that's helpful, Larissa. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, so uh, we, we talked about this last time, but, you know, just remember that um, uh, that this functor says what each object, which to which object each object maps and to what morphism each morphism maps. It doesn't create the morphism here. No, no, it's just saying in the target category, what is F? you know, map to, and what is H map to? Now, F, F maps to, F, F must map over into some morphism that goes between what two objects in D? F is bound to, it has to go between two certain objects as dictated by how F, the functor, acts on A and acts on B. What does F go from? When we map when, F over, it has to go between what, if it, if, Eric? Um, or, if or, it A, if it B. A, and F B. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It has to go. So if F, A, and F, B were the same object, it would go from that object to itself. It, it has to. And I think Eric was trying to make the same point yeah um so we, often it has this flavor of embedding category c and d but often coarse graining it or abstracting um and 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 it's easy to get caught up in the in the how it maps objects but the more important thing is how it lifts morphisms we talk about it lifting f to this category it like transports it into that category and that's going to be a very important concept in functional programming. We talk about lifting when we say map this function in, in like Haskell or in Scala. We say map this function over an array. It's We talk about lifting it 
that function is lifted to operate. Normally it operates on elements and now we're lifting it to operate on arrays or on lists or on trees or on whatever. And, and that's a, cate a concept from category theory. It's terminology from category theory which reflects the fact that these structures, trees and lists and vectors and maybes, are, these are all functors. These are all endo functors, functor from hask to hask or a category to itself. Um, uh, okay. Um, and just remember, you know, the, commonly uh, mapping objects is, it's not injective. We can map many objects onto the same one. That's part of this coarse graining. It's not surjective. It's typically many other objects there. We're kind of embedding it, finding a piece of this target category. Um, uh, and um, it it's not we're, we're not dealing with the insides of the object. We're just saying what object this one maps to, what object that object maps to, et cetera. Um, and we're mapping um, morphisms in a way. But I I want, I want to talk about some examples. I want to, I want to talk about these homomorphisms because there's, there's a lot of intuition here. So I th this one has has it nicely. Here's some dot dot dots and indicates this is the free monoid. And in the free monoid with plus on natural numbers, say, for this free monoid, does anyone remember if I compose one with one, what do I get? If I compose this, remember there's only one object, so any morphism can be composed with any other because they all go from, they're all end to end. They all go from that object to itself. So if I compose one with one, what do I get? Two. Two. And if I compose one with two, what do I get? Three. Three. And if I compose two with one, what do I get? Also three. three. Also three. That's right. And if I compose zero with one, what do I get? Uh, one. One. If I compose zero with three, what do I get? Three. Three, that's right. So this is the additive monoid as it coded at categorically. It's like, it's like categories. And that's nice, but there's a functor from it to this, to this category here, which encodes kind of a monoid in, for natural numbers mod two. And this has two morphisms. There's this identity morphism, which represents what number? This represents... Guess what Zero. number this Zero. represents? Zero. Because if you add it to anything, you get that other thing back, right? Like, yeah, any yeah. morphism doesn't matter, right? It, you, you compose it with anything, you get that same thing back. Like you add zero mod two and you get the same thing back, right? And then this one corresponds to one in this mod two category. So here, if we add zero and zero, we get one. We add zero and zero in this mod two category, we get what? Zero. 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 If we add if we add zero and one, we get what? One. 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 If we add one and one, we get what? One. One. Mod no. two. Uh, we get zero. We get zero. Mod two. One plus one is zero. It wraps around. It wraps around. So um if we keep on adding one to things we get add one to zero you get one add one to one you get zero add zero. add one to that you get one and you add one to that you get zero it's just it's like a you, you're counting the last bit so here's the more here's the here's the uh, homomorphism here um guess what identity maps to what does it have to map to to be a homomorphism, it has to map to be a functor, which is a monoid homomorphism for this. That's what functors are. They're, they're different. These homomorphisms are structure-preserving morphisms conceptually. And so a, a functor captures for a given thing here, a monoid. It, it's a monoid homomorphism is what the functor expresses between these two monoids. 
uh, when it's applied between these two monoids, it's a mono and homomorphism. And so guess what? Guess what identity morphism has to map to? To what? Identity on the other side? Yeah, it has to. Identities have to map to identities through a functor. And that has to be the case for it to be homomorphous. Um, we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. What is one map to here? One. One. Now, the key thing, or a key thing, is what is two map to? Zero or the identity? Two, zero. Zero in the identity. Yes, the identity. Now, now let's, let's, and what is three map to? One. One. What is four map to? Four, uh, zero. Zero. What is five map to? Five, one. One. So we're on a roll. All the even ones map to what? Zero. Zero. All the odd ones map to what? One. One. Okay, let, let's... Yeah. Let's just go through it in our mind, right? Okay. So so remember for it to be a for it to be a morphism a, 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 a functor, for it to be a more homomorphism too, we have to be able to do things over here, either do things over here and map the result. And it has to be the same as first mapping them and doing it over there. It it, it you'd still yield the same result. So let's add zero to zero. And if we map that over, if 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 we map that over, we get what? If 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 we add, if we do zero and zero here, if we compose those two, what do we get over here on the left? We get if we compose the zero morph uh, the identity morphism with the identity morphism. In other words, we add zero to zero, what do we get over here on the left? What do we get? Zero. 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 Zero, 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 zero to zero. Good. Zero okay. bit one. Let's do zero to let's 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 do zero to zero first. And if we map that over, what is it mapped to? Over here on the right. What is zero mapped to on the left? Map to on the right. Zero. Zero. Identities have to map to identity morphisms, right? Mm -hmm. This is identity morphism. Okay. And is that the same? The question is, is that the same as what? What's the key thing to check? Is that the same as first doing what? Mapping identity over. What's the map? What do you get? What morphism do you get when you map a single identity over here? You know, so you, you just do identity, you map it over, you get what? identity identity and then and then we map identity again over we get identity and then we compose them here and if you compose over on the right identity with identity what do you get identity identity you're in any category you get that right okay now let's do zero on the left composed on the left with one what do we get you said one. it earlier. One. Yeah. That's on the left. And we, now we map that over. We get what? We map one over. We get what? Here. One, two, one. one. We map one. one. Good. Okay. Now that has to be the same as what? Same. The mapping same as. Uh huh. Mapping what? Map Mapping zero with one to one. Oh, okay. So mapping zero over identity and then with... composing that with the mapping of one over and composing them on the right hand side, right? That's yeah. That's that's the that's that's the rule here, right? We we have to get the same thing. Composing on the left and then mapping over has to be the same as mapping over and then composing that's all i'm doing is playing out this rule right now f is zero and g is one 
And we can either compose on the left, zero with one gives one, and then we map it over and it has to be the same as mapping zero over first, which is what? Mapping zero over gives what? Zero. Zero and composed with on the right hand side on the the mod two with mapping one over, which gives what? One. One. And then composing them on the right hand side. Right? This F say. is the functor, right? Right? Yeah. So so we either do the work on the left and map it over, or we can do the we can map it over first and do the work on the right. I'm saying do the work, I mean compose, and we have to get the same thing. Do you see that? Yes. So that's that's all I'm going through in my in my thinking here, right? Um so um let's let's do it now for one and one. So we could compose these two on the left. Right? G after F. What is G? What is F? It's one. What is G? One. One. So we compose one with one in the left. What do we get by composing one with one? We get one two. One two. Good. It's two on the left hand side. It's two. And then we map two over to the right hand side. Right? All I'm doing is I'm thinking this through, right? We we did one and one. We got two, we map it over. What do we get on the right-hand side? What does F give us when we map it over? What is it? It maps two over to what? Remember what uh, I thought about? Even zero. numbers versus odd. Yeah, zero. zero. Okay, it gets zero. And that ha we have to, that has to be the same as, I'm back there again, right? As mapping these things over first, mapping one over to the right, and composing oh, it with mapping mm -hmm. one over to the right and and composing them over there on the right hand side. So so what if we map here one over, we get what here? If, if one. we do f of one, we get one. F of one, mm -hmm. we get one. And if we compose them on the right, we get what? On the right hand side, composing one with one gives us what? This is mod zero. two. It gives us zero, which is the same as what we got when we mapped two over. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? It's all consistent. We could do it for one and two. If we compose one and two over on the left hand side, what do we get? Three. We get what? Three. 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 Mapping a three over gives us what? If we map three and over. One doing as, as I'm going through this, right? One and two gives us three on the left-hand side and we map it over, we get one. So that has to be the same as doing what first? Mapping one over and composing it on the right with mapping two over and, and you get a result. So if we map one over, we get what here? If we if we map one over here, we get what on the right hand side? One. 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 If we map two over, we get what? Zero. 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 And if you compose them on the right, you get what? One. One. One, which is the one same as one. F of yeah. three, right? When we mapped it over. Three. So it's all consistent. We can either do the work on the left and map it over or do the map it over and do the work on the right the categories the embedding is close enough on the right it's not the same as this gosh this only keeps track of the last bit but what it keeps track of is totally consistent in its behavior in its structure with what's on the left right do you see that yeah what's on the left yes. here how it acts in terms of the very limited information we're keeping here, it's totally consistent with, with what that information would tell us from the right if we were to map it over. It's, it gives us a kind of summary of what's going on on the right.
it's a crude summary, but it's totally consistent with what's going on in the right, right? Do, do, do you get that understanding? Yes, thank you. So is this category the same as this one on the left? Is this category a mirror exactly of this on the left? Is it identical no. to this on the yeah. left? No. How many morphisms are on the left? Um, How many morphisms here infinite? are there? Uh, infinite number. Yeah, it's it's an infinite number here. How many are there on the right? No, no, no. It's a dot, 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 no, no. Oh, uh, yeah, so yeah, here, yeah. This Sorry. Is three, infinite. This is three monoid. Natural numbers with yeah, yeah. plus. Sorry. So it's infinite. How many are there on the right? Two. 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 That is... They're not the same category, but... The one on the right is true to, it has fidelity to, it, it, it's kind of a summary of, a coarse graining of, a, a, a kind of a, um, a, a kind of aggregation of, or, or um, abstraction of the thing on the right. It, it communicates just a little bit of what's on the right, but in a way that's totally consistent with what's on the right. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes. Do you get a flavor of this? It doesn't have to be the same, but it has to be true to it. it whatever it keeps, it has to be true to it. Okay, now I think we're doing the case that Nona was thinking about. Imagine that on the right, we have things mod four. So so let's let's rehearse mod four, right? If we add zero and zero mod four, what do we got? One. Oh, zero. 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 Sorry, zero. Zero. If we zero. add zero. zero, zero. Yeah, if we add zero and one mod four, we get what? Zero and one. Uh, one. Okay, good. If we add zero and two mod mod two. four, what do we get? Good. Two. Um. Yeah, and zero and anything, we get the same, right? Yeah. And yeah. Composition with with identity is always the same yeah. morphism. If we add one to two, what do we get here on the left? Three. Three. If we add one to three, what do we get on the uh, on oh. the left? Oh, oh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This is terrible. Oh my gosh. This is like broken. Oh my gosh. This is horrible. Don't, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Um. Ah, ah this is, why, why is this broken on the left? Four should actually be zero. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here, let's. Um, okay, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm a bad boy. Um, sorry, I'm a, I'm a rushed boy. Okay, here we go. Uh, ba ba ba. Okay, that's that's embarrassing, but better late than never, and better Nate than lover. Um, okay, so here we go. Um, fixed in real time. This is what it looks like, right? Okay, it it doesn't have a four and I want to let's like out to lunch. Um okay, uh here we go. Boom. Okay, there we go. Right? So um when you add one to two on the left, what do you get? Three. On the left. Oh my gosh. Sorry. <laughs> there's an errand. <laughs> there's still this there's still this bad arrow. Hey, get out out black spot. Um uh, let's hey, hey, come on. Give me give me this this little thing there. Okay. Um oh my uh okay, here we go. Uh okay, uh well uh there we go. Uh so so yeah, if we if we add one and two on the left, what do we get? Three. Three. If we add one and three, what do we get? Zero. 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 Because we have it. If we add two, right, right. If we add two and three, what do we get? Zero. One. Two and three? One, one, one. one. Yeah. If you add two and two, what do you get? Zero. Uh, zero. 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 That's right. Now let's think about how they map over here to the right. So. What does zero have to map to zero? What does zero have to map to by zero, the rules of function? Zero. zero. It has to go to zero. 
Because, I mean, on both sides, adding it to anything else gives us that other thing, right? It's it's always like it doesn't matter when you when you do it. It's it's there's unitality, right? Oh, um, what is one map to? Um, one. so one on the left maps to what? What is the functor one. map it to? Maps to one. Good. What is two map to? To zero. To zero. What is three map to? Three one. Good. And so yeah, let, we can go through them again, right? Um, yeah, odd and even. Same thing, right? If we add one and if we add one after uh, two after one on the left, we get what? On the left, two after one gives us what? Three. 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 At the left if we side. map that, if we map that over, we get what? If we map three one. over, we get one. And that has to be the same as doing what? But two mapping we say to earlier, and then yes. one to one, one, which will map to good. one. Good. So good. Two maps to what? Zero. zero. What is the one functor map? map? Zero. Uh, one one maps to what? One. Uh, one. One. And zero with uh composed with one on the right hand side is what? One. One. One, which is the same as mapping. Three over, right? The result three, of doing two uh, and mapping one on to the one. Left. Yeah, yeah. So it's all totally consistent. Is this category on the left the same as the category or category on the right the same as this one on the left? No, but they this one on the right honors it. This one on the right is true to it. It has fidelity to it. it it's an aggregate summary of it, right? It it doesn't keep all the information. But what it does keep is totally consistent, right? It doesn't make some distinctions, the thing on the right does. But what it gloms together, it's totally consistent with the structure of the thing on the left. It, it gloms them together in a, in a way that honors that structure, that doesn't, it's not willy-nilly. So I want to ask you, okay, so here we have this morphism. What would a non-homomorphism be? Like, I've been going over homomorphisms, but give me a non-homomorphism. Give me a thing that's not a homomorphism. So I'm mapping telling you, like, homomorphisms one. are nice things. Yeah, adding, a, mapping identity to one, right? Why, why would that be a problem? Okay, suppose we say oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna map I'm from my mor my morphism <laughs> my functor I'm gonna map it to one. Why is that not a real functor? Why is that a pretender? Why is that a a a, a fraud of a, a functor <laughs> fraud? Why is it a functor a fraudy it, fraud functor? Why, it why violates is that? the identity mapping to the identity. Well, yeah, it mm. violates identity to identity. And moreover, and then, it also was going to lead to weird behavior, right? <laughs> like, yeah. like, it, like, like map, like composing any, any, composing zero with anything over here on the left will give what? If you, um, if you compose zero with any other morphism, you get the original what back, the original morphism. And you have to map that over. That would need to be the, that would need to be the same thing as, Mapping like zero over, which would be like one <laughs> over here, and then and then you have to like compose anything with one. It 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 it's got to be the same. It, it would all like I, Eugenia Chang actually says it in the book. Remember the world of zero or something? It's like everything has to collapse because there can be no distinctions. If if you don't if if you map zero onto one, like everything has to be one here. Like there can be no distinctions because it screws things up so terribly, right? You, it doesn't make sense. Like zero is doing nothing here, and you map it to something that does some changes things over here. It's it's not going to drive unless everything is collapsed into one one mess. So that would be a non-homomorphism. But is is that the only non-homomorphism? Can you come up with a homomorphism? that is screwed up in some other way than it maps identity to a non-identity thing? Sorry, uh, can, you, can mm -hmm. we say uh, 
if uh, if the, um, if uh, OG is not equal if a G if that OG. So so you're saying can we say this is not equal? Yes yes. No, by the rules of a functor, I'm saying, and the rules of a homomorphism that no, no, a functor no, embodies. A for, uh, for a non-homomorphism, non yes, exactly. Exactly, Nona. That's exactly it. And I'm asking you to give me a concrete example. Like, come up with an example which violates this, and therefore we know it's not a real functor. We know it's a fraud of a functor. It's a fake functor. It's a bad functor. It's a it's a fraudulent functor. Give me give me give me one that's not a real functor. It it, it scrambles things in some weird way by violating that rule. What would it be? Give me give me something which where that doesn't work. What would it be? Like what like give me give me one where that's not the case. Uh, if two maps to one, maybe? Yeah, two maps to one. That'd be pretty funky, right? If two maps to one over here. Okay, let's let's go through it in our head. So in theory, we how can we show that that violates that rule? So if two maps to one over here, I I, I claim that will be a fraud of a functor. Let's go through it. Give me give me something where you can show that it's a fraud that it violates that rule. So if you compose, uh huh, yeah, yeah, two, uh -huh. two maps uh -huh. to uh, one, and then if you have two composed with two on the side, it would go mm. to four, but we don't have four on the other side. So I'm just not sure how we would show oh, that the uh, composition well, won't behave as we want. Or I guess it's. Well, Remember two and two on the left. Uh, so if, okay, remember two composed yeah. with two on, on the left would gives be what? zero. Zero would be zero, and it yeah, and and it it would map over to to zero here. Whereas yeah. if you map two onto one, one plus you know mapping a two onto one, mm -hmm. one plus one in this category would give zero. So that's not. But you're close. Let's not pick two and two. Pick two and something else, or pick pick something else that adds to two. What what would it be? Zero. What other thing? Oh. One and one. How about one and one? Let's try one and one. So if we compose on the left, right? F after G or G after F. I'm I'm just playing out this rule here. G after F. If we do. One after one on the left, what do we get? Uh, for that monoid on the left, what do we get? One after two. one, and, and we get two. Okay, good. That's good. Two is and zero. And if we mapping. map that over, the fraudulent, the, the pretender to uh to the to the functor, the fraudulent functor, the fake functor. If that map that two over, uh, that has to be the same. So we map the two over, right? We we hit it with F and we map it. Remember we said the fraudulent functor maps two to what? Eric said it earlier. Zero. He's, he's imagining two. that. No, 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 no. Eric said the fraudulent functor would be one that maps. He proposed, maybe you could get a fraudulent functor if you have two mapped to what, Eric? Uh, one. Two maps to one. To one, that's right. Okay, so... If we did one plus one on the left, right? One after one, we get two. We map it over to the right. Uh, we get one. And that has to be the same as mapping what? What's F? What is F? What is F? What is little f here? One. How do we get the two? One and one, right? So F is one. So what's mapping of F of one over to the right hand side? What's what's the mapping of F of, of one over? Right? Are we we're doing, letting well, the others doing, go the normal way? Well well here, I mean we're we're so, saying what's a fraudulent yeah. functor? So so what I'm saying is how we determine it's a fraudulent functor, we find that it violates 
we're finding that it violates this rule. So the rule is we're picking, we're finding a case F, a particular lowercase f, lowercase g, where it violates this rule. And the proposal that Eric gave was one and one, or maybe you gave it, Larissa. Yeah, one and one. No, Eric. Um, uh, and and uh, we're showing that this fraudulent functor that Eric identified, where two is mapped to one, two F, capital F maps two on the left to one on the right, will violate this rule. So if we have lowercase f b one, lowercase g b one. You compose them on the left, you get two, and that and capital F, the functor maps that the fraud of a functor, the fake functor maps that over on the right to one by how Eric described it. That's the fraudulent functors, you know, crude, stupid mapping. It's it's like a fake mapping, a fraudulent mapping, a fictitious map, you know, bad mapping. Okay, and that. And, and we're going to try to show it's bad, right? So this thing on the left, we know its value is what? Its value by for this for this fraudulent functor, it's one, right? That's what Eric said. Maps two on the left to one on the right. Okay, so it's one here. And now I'm saying little case f is one. You map that over to the right. What do you get? One. What do you one? You map and G is also one, so you get one, and you compose those on the right. One and one on the right gives you what? Zero. Zero. And so they're inconsistent. This thing on the left is one for the fraudulent functor. This thing on the right is zero. So this fraudulent functor. That's not a real functor. That's a fraud of a functor. That's not a real functor. It's not a real homomorphism. That's that's a that's a pretender to a homomorphism. That's a that's a you know a a, a fraudulent homomorphism. Um it's a it's a crude, you know, it's a it's a fraud. Heteromorphism? Um, it's a what? Heteromorphism? Wow. Well, yeah, maybe it's a heteromorphism. Yeah. Don't call it a pseudopuncture because there's actually something called a pseudopuncture, which is quite <laughs> nice. But um, so we can't call it, can't call it that. Far be it from me. Uh, okay. But let's talk about these C sets. Let's talk about these. Co well, any questions on this before we go on? So I, I had these non monoid hom homomorphisms, got to, but I've got to correct, got to correct that. Um, by deleting these bad things here, um, which I'm doing in real time. Um, but uh, are there any questions on what we've just covered for this idea of a monoid homomorphism um, before we, we, we kind of go on? Um, because it's kind of emblematic of homomorphisms in general, this kind of, uh, the notion of a monoid homomorphism, that, that basic, uh, rule for what a functor has to be adhered to is 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 consistent. Okay, so so um, uh, any questions on what we've just covered before I go on to the C sets, these encodings? This is a fraudulent. By the way, this is the fraudulent one here. Um, uh, so so this is. This is a non-monoid homomorphism. There we go. There we go. Boom. Uh, this is not a monoid, uh, non-monoid homomorphism. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, this guy is also not uh, a monoid homomorphism, but he has to be cleaned up. So this is answer. Oh, no. Did I? Okay. Uh, well, oh, okay, okay, save, fine. Um, yeah, so this is answer two, and I'll I'll clean it up. Here we go. Um, and this guy goes away, and you've got this crude thing again. Heck, get it down there. Okay. Um, okay. Sorry, I'm just I want to get you these slides here. Okay. Okay. So, uh, any questions on this before we go on? No, thank you. Okay, okay, good. Um, 
So I'm showing those two things where we map the identity badly, the identity is not mapped to an identity, um, uh, uh, or where the you know two is mapped to this bad this bad uh, uh, thing. So so we can two is is mapped in in a way that's consistent. So the point is homomorphisms are nice mappings. They're not just any old mapping. They're not random mappings. With set, there's really no restrictions on them, but that's anomalous, like because there's no structure for to preserve. But here, you got to preserve structure, and there's a lot of these mappings. You know, just flap it down where it it, it splats it down. It's it's not going to be a homomorphism. Homomorphisms are these nice ones, these ones that are are noble. They they preserve the structure. Okay, let's talk about pre sheets. So I asked you to think about graphs. So here we have a schema category for graphs. This is a little drawable category. And I took the liberty of violating convention and drawing what, what is not according to convention here. What have I drawn that normally we don't draw? Identities. Identity morphisms. So it's always an identity, but I've I've taken the liberty of drawing it. Um so that we can be very explicit about what it goes to. And we have a morphism named source from E to V and target from E to V. And what I, when I first introduced this category, I kind of waved my hands and said, E kind of represents edges and V represents, what did I say? V represents Versus, what? Vertices. Vertices, vertices, yeah, in a graph. But that may have seemed kind of weird because, well, what is it? Where are they? You know, I'm like, um, and what I told you is, well, well, where we'll really get interesting is when we map these things into set. And I asked you as part of your take home exercise to map this, to, 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 to map, create a mapping from this thing into set that encodes this graph. And this graph has how many vertices in it? How many vertices Three. are there? Three. And how many edges are there? Six. Six, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, right? Uh, edges in green, I should say. Edges in green. Um, okay. Um, and I said, okay, so, so there's a particular graph. Now, we want to encode that graph, describe that graph using this by mapping with a functor, mapping this structure into set. So as you know, functors are these structure preserving mappings, but here what they're doing is it's, it's because they're structure preserving, they're mapping each, I mean, they're structure preserving here, there's not a lot of structure to preserve. But but there are in terms of some basic morphisms here, yeah, you know, that have to be, be have structure, and the and the identities have structure that have to be mapped onto identities. So it's it's, it's there's not all all the, a lot of fancy composition structure, but we have some structure. So I'm going to ask you, what does E need to map to? What set in what particular set in the category set of sets or sets or objects and and, and the morphisms or functions between them. What particular set does E map to? What specific set? Is it the set of blue roses and green crocodiles? Or what, what is it? What does E map to? Edges? The set, well, the set with six elements. Good, set with six elements. Yeah, and and you could say, and I, yeah, I mean, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, sure. I mean, truth is, we're going to be considering things that have six elements. A lot of the time, we'll just consider them the kind of same. They're just roses by any name smell just as sweet. They're they're just different in their labeling. Um, but but yeah, it's a six element set. Um, the the set of edges, and we'll call them one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's say. Um, and what is V map to? What particular set? In the category of sets and functions, what remember objects map to objects. So this object maps 
to an object in set, in, which is a particular set with one, two, three, four, five, six. The, this object maps to a particular object in set. And what particular object is it? A, B, in C. Set. Yeah, A, B, C. That's exactly right. Okay, that's good. Okay. Now, functors do something deeper, though, something more important, more interesting than mapping objects to object. What else do they map besides objects? Morphisms. They map morphisms. Okay, so they map a morphism in the source category to morphism in the target category. So let's start with the easy ones. What does IDE get mapped to? What what is what does it get mapped to in the category of sets and functions? Well, it gets mapped to a morphism there. What are morphisms in the category of sets and functions? What sort of thing are they? They are begins with F. Functions. What are morphisms? Yeah, they're functions. So what function does IDE get, get mapped to? in the category of sets and functions. It, the the uh -huh. identity function? Identity function from what set to the, to that, to what set to itself? Uh, or... From the six element set to itself. Good, good. So it sends one to one, two to two, two to three, four to four, five to six, okay. And what is IDV mapped to? in the category of sets and functions. It maps to a what? Absomorphism, which is a what? In category of sets and functions, a morphism is a, begins with an F. IDV maps to a morphism in the category of sets and functions. What are morphisms in the category of sets and functions? They are, begins with F. Functions. Functions. Okay, what function is it? that it maps to in the category of sets and functions? What particular function does identity map to? Well, an identity morphism in the source category has to map to a what in the target category? The identity morphism in the source category has to map to a what? Identity function. Identity, identity function. So what's the identity function that this particular morphism IDV maps to? It's uh, the identity it, morphism, uh-huh, Tony, yeah? A, B, C to itself. Yeah, so maps A to A, B to B, C to C. Okay, that's the easy ones, right? Those are, those are the, the ones that are, are pretty easy. Okay. Now, what is source map to? What? So, so this morphism in this category graph, it maps to some particular morphism in the category of sets and functions. That morphism, like all morphisms in the category sets and functions, is a what? Begins with F. It's a, a function. A function. And what is that function in the category of sets and functions to which source maps? What object does it go from in the, ca in the category of sets and functions? Source maps to a function that goes from what set to what set? What's the set from which it? Travels whence it comes edge, to the vertices. Edge yeah, yeah. To the vertices. edges, uh, edges. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. It maps the set one, two, three, four, five, six to the set what? Vertices, vertices, vertices. A, B, C. In other words, for each edge, it tells us the source what? Source vertex. Vertex. So what? So what does it tell us? The function to which source maps in the category sets of functions. The function to which it maps. What does it map one to? What particular a. vertex does it map one to? A. What does it map two to? Also A. 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 Yeah, because it's a source, right? In this graph, right? What does it map three to? The, the 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 functor that encodes this particular graph maps the source thing it says hey for this edge three its source is what b b for four what does it say 
It says, hey, the yes. function says uh, the function to which source maps over in the category sorts and functions says maps from E for each of these edges. It says for that edge, the source is either A, B, or C. So for edge four, what is it going to say its sources? C. C sources of four. C is, 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 is the source of four. How about for five? Five is A. A and six is? Uh, B. B. So that's what source is. How about target? How about someone else's voice too? Target. What what is what's what's the the this is going to be mapped to a function in the category of sets and functions, and what is it going to say the target is? So so its job is in life, whatever this maps to, it it it's a function because that's what a morphism is in the category of sets and functions. This morphism in this schema category, the functor maps this morphism to morphism in the target which is a function, and it's a function from what to what? It's a function from the edge set mapped to by E, by the functor, to the map to the vertex set mapped to by the functor from V, right? E, it maps to a, some set, the set of edges. V is mapped to some set, the set of vertices, and tar target maps to a function between them, goes from edges to vertices. That's what the functor does. It maps objects to objects, which are sets, and set and morphism to morphism, which are in these cases are functions between those sets. Okay. So target, what is it going to map? It's to uh, one uh, two. One, yeah. What is uh, it going to map? C. Okay. And and someone else also, no, no, because you, you did oh. source. So someone else I want also. To say so, target for two is what? C. C. Target for three is what? C. C. We're on a roll. Target for four is what? B. B. Target for five is what? B. 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 Okay. Target for six is what? B. B. Okay. So we totally specified for each of these functions what is the function, and for each of these more for each of these objects, what is the particular set? That completely defines the functor. And it looks like this, right? Um, this is this is the function. It's just an identity function. The set mapped to by this is, is this particular, for example, that particular set um, mapped to from, from this object is this particular set, this, this, this morphism in the source maps to this particular function in the target, um, and and it maps one onto A and two onto A. That's the source, right? Three uh, is is B, etc. So these are just specifications. This this little notation means map to one maps to A, two maps to A, three maps to B. I'm just listing what this function is, right? Um, now, um, you can also think of this as a database and, and you could think of, well, V here has three primary keys. It has three possible values. E has six primary keys. It has six possible values. And you could think of source, this morphism going from E to V, it's like a foreign key for this row, the value of E1, it specifies the particular value, the primary key to use in this other table, the V table. So these are like two different tables. This table has only the primary key column. This table is a primary key column and two foreign key col columns, which specify kind of as almost as a lookup table. Um, for this value of e, what the uh, what the foreign key is, so the value um, uh, for its its source, and this is a database encoding of this functor. Each object is a table. Each morphism from an object is a foreign key column for that table. Now, why doesn't V have any 
non-identity column here. Why doesn't V of any non-identity column? You could kind of think of the only column here as an identity column. Why doesn't it have any non-identity column? But why is E has two? Why is that? Because it has no morphisms coming out from it. Yeah, it has no morphisms coming up from it. Exactly. E has two morphisms coming up from it. So it has two foreign keys. And those specify the mapping from this value of E to the target. One, the source is A. Two, the source is A. Three, the source is B. I'm just reading it out. Four, the source is C. Five, the source is A. Six, the source is B. All right. And target, one, the target is C. Right? Just reading it up. Two, the target is C. Three, the target is C. Do you see how this is an encoding of this functor? I mean, this this database encodes this functor. It 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 says what is each object mapped to? Well, V maps to these three things, the set one A B C. E maps to the set one, two, three, four, five, six. Source is defined as a lookup table, right? And target is defined as a lookup table. Um, do you see that? Are you comfortable with that? This is just like a lookup table. It says, oh, you want to know what it is for two? Just look it up. It's A for source. It's C for target. Are you comfortable with that, everyone? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Now, Thanks. Good. Now, I, I, I want to highlight, like, the beauty of, of this is, I, I know this is like stretching you, okay, a graph, it's just like, it's like this functor, it's got these pieces in it, you have to specify for each object, if the schema, that's functor, which maps it into a set, but don't get, don't get caught up in that, because all the time in category theory, we zoom out, and we hide that. We don't have to worry about it anymore. We we don't have to worry about those details. This this is true. I mean, this is a very useful representation. But don't get caught up in like, is this being really what a, a graph is? And I've got to, every time I think about a graph in category theory, you have to be thinking about this functor. No, no, no. But I mean, like a lot of the times we'll be dealing with like a category of graphs where each object is this monolithic thing. It's just point. We don't have to think what's inside of it. Just like in software engineering, we don't want to have to think about what's inside a function if we don't if we don't need to. It's just this point. And these, these um, arrows between these things, these morphisms, gets what they are. If these graphs, these are the graphs, the objects, what are these arrows? They are, what are they? Graph, graph homomorphisms. homomorphisms. Yeah, structure preserving mappings between graphs. Huh? Um, there's structure preserving mappings between graphs. And and I actually you know drew one out here. I mean, like this is a structure preserving mapping from this graph on the left to this one. You know, it, it may not be obvious that this is a homomorphism, but it is. It's a special relationship. Not every graph over here on the right would have this. No, 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 no. Like, it couldn't map, you know, red onto just something from A to A. No, no, no. It has to be a very specific mapping. And I've tried to color, you know, a color over here on the left so that we can indicate to what morphism on the right this guy in blue goes. So, so I'm claiming this thing on the right here um, is a kind of summary of, or aggregation of, or abstraction of the of this one on the left. And there's a, a graph homomorphism between them. Can you tell me what? So so again, the flavor of these homomorphisms are they have to stay true to the rules of the, their source. They have to be have fidelity to it. They can't violate the structure of these things on the left. They can't just send, you know, 
an edge from the left to any old edge. No, no, no. It has to go from the from the where the source vertex went in the mapping to where the target vertex went in the mapping, right? So there's a very nice relationship here. Can you tell me, like, I, I uh, but as often as the case, it collapses some things. It's a summary, a, a coarse graining. So I'm telling you, this one on the right has coarse grained certain vertices from this one on the left. And I haven't told you which ones, but can you can you kind of figure it out by tracing which ones have been collapsed? Mm -hmm. C and uh, D. C and B. Yeah, C and B got collapsed. A did not get collapsed. So can you tell me, like you might say, well, wait a minute, you know, over here on the left, one and two, like, like on the left, one and two, there, there's no, there's no target to which A goes to where there are three morphisms to it. I mean, here one and two go to C, and here five goes to B, and so like. How how is it that there are these three morphisms corresponding to them? Look at the colors coming out from A to B. Why why is it that all three go from A to capital A over here to capital B here, but only two go to any and the max of two go to any one object here? Why is that? Because what? Because A and or C and B have collapsed down into one. So this is really yeah. the combination of yeah. horses from A that go to C or B. That's right. So so this one goes to something that got collapsed to B. Um, this one went and this one went. So so the five went from A to B over here on the left, but now lowercase B got collapsed into capital B. So did lowercase C. And so all of these morphisms here, even though on the left they went to different objects, even though it it made distinctions, it made it it was finer grained depictions, they go to the same place here because it it just collapsed them down. Uh, okay, so but why are there all these weird loops over here? Whereas here there's there's only one loop, but but here's this this is set of loops like. Where did this where did this black one come from? Can you show me? Where did the black one come from? Uh, six. This one B. Yeah, it came from six. That that was six. Yeah. So so it came from that. And when it goes from capital B to capital B, I mean, because lowercase B got collapsed into capital B, right? Has to. How about how about this magenta one? Why is that a morphism from capital B to capital B? Um, it's mapped Here, from okay. by three, and it's the, yeah. it's a self loop because B equals C in the new area in the in the second exactly. Path. Yeah, so remember any morphism here has to go. So so the map over of any morphism has to be a morphism that goes from where its source went to, which is capital B, to where its target went to, which is capital B as well. So it has to go from this to this. And 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 the same thing is true for the orange one. So this is a graph homomorphism. And you may say, well, this doesn't look like this, but maybe if you squint and maybe if you were to bring these things really, really close together, like imagine this was like in some nice graph drawing package and we were to, you know, move these little vertices close together. So they became really, really small. Maybe it would start to pouch out like this and the self-morphisms. It would look kind of like what's on the right right they, they'd be it, it just like it's zooming out from it so what i'm saying is this is a graph homomorphism now you could say well well yeah but you know encoding each of these we encode each of these was this whole functor thing but don't, don't get caught up in it that the functor is, is one way to represent this graph but there's a deeper notion of a graph structure which functors preserve, and there's functors between these graphs, which are functors between these pre sheaves, which which honor this structure, and these are graph homomorphisms. And so what I'm saying is that it's very common, like that we then zoom out and we just talk about graphs as these little objects, and and there's graph homomorphisms map between them, and. All that's true at the same time that we can represent a particular graph this way, 
don't you don't have to worry that like each of these you have to think about it as a little functor or whatever. No, 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 no. You don't have to worry about that. It's just it's like graph, and these are graph homomorphisms. These are things that are true to its structure, and we know how to deal with them. It turns out, it turns out they will be natural transformations between these functors, but don't get caught up in that. It's just we will often leave that aside, and we'll we'll we can reason at this level of like. A category of graphs. Same thing is true for dynamical systems. And if you watch that video by Richard Southwell, you probably noticed that. And I know we have to wrap up, but the idea is that we have discrete dynamical systems, which can be depicted with this category, or or which can be encoded by mapping this category to set, right? by a functor from this category to set, a structure preserving mapping from this category to set. What is state? Can anyone tell me if you watch that video, what's, what does state represent? The, the state variables inside of the system? Yeah, and what is next? Or what is this thing that kind of, what, what's the morphism that goes from state to state other than the identity? There's a non-identity one. It's to be the, interesting. What is it? Yeah. The, the function that updates the system by one time step. It updates the function, the system by one step. So I, I showed, I draw it out, I drew out on the left-hand side here, such a dynamical system in the way, same way that Richard Richard Southwell did. You know, I showed like the state I, state A, state B, state C, state D. I, I used I to kind of denote initial or something to yeah, and kind of arbitrary, but I, I said if you're in state I, it goes to A, and then maybe A goes to B, and B goes to C, and C goes to D, and D goes to A. So, what would a functor be from this schema category to set? Well, like what, what would state map to? So the states are in blue here. So what would what set what particular set would state map to? If these are the states A B I A B C D. What would state map to and set? What particular set in the category of sets and functions would state map to? Is it A, B, C, D, I? Yeah, A, B, C, D, I. Yeah. Yep, exactly. And what would next map to? What would what would the thing to advance the discrete dynamical system map to? Well, it's mapping what state to what state. So this is a morphism. When we had, when the functor, so the functor maps state to some particular set, and it maps next to some particular morphism. Functors map objects to objects. So state goes to an object and set, which is a state, a set, some particular set, in this case, I, A, B, C, D, good. And morphism, and a functor maps morphisms to morphisms. And morphisms in set are what? They begin with F. They are functions. Functions. So next maps onto a function that goes from what? And that function's job is to take in what set is input. So it's a it's a function from what set to what set? From the set what to the set what? The set A B C D I to itself. E to itself. E yeah. Maybe, yeah, from from what state maps to to what state maps to, which is the set I, A, B, C, D. Yeah, you can put them in anywhere, sure. And what is that function? Like, what is it map? It's a, it's a function from I, A, B, C, D to I, A, B, C, D. So for each possible value, let's say for I, it puts it to a particular value in I, A, C, B, A, I, I, A, B, C, D. What value does I map to? What this function that next maps onto for I, if it gets an I, it maps it to a what? A. A. And if it gets an A, it maps it to a what? B. B. And it maps it gets a B, it maps it to a C. C. And and the function mapped to by next, if it gets a C, it'll map it to a what? D. E. D, and if it gets a D, it will map it to what? Back to A. A. Yeah, so 
so that's that. And it's this, right? Like state maps onto IACBD. Okay. Uh, the identity I didn't go over at this time, but it maps I to I, A to B, I to A to A, B to B, you know, pretty, pretty routine. And next maps, that's really what it's encoding this, right? I goes to A, A goes to B, B goes to C, C goes to D, D goes to A, right? And we can encode as a database in this way. There's only one table because there's only one object. That table has his primary keys, the values of that set, IACB, uh, IACBD, uh, IABCD, right? And as foreign keys, it says the value of next. So I maps to A, A maps to B, B maps to C, C maps to D, D maps to A. Do you see how this encodes this functor? Do you see that again? Yes. So these are these co-pre sheets. These are fancy name, right? It's a C set. It's this mapping from a schema, which encodes like what connects to what, right? Like, like each edge connects a vertex as its source and vertex is targeted. The schema kind of describes the kind of the grammar, as it were. It's particularly simple here. And the mapping to, to set kind of creates an instance of it. It creates a particular instance of this schema, like a database of this with this schema. Do you understand that? Do you get that? Yes. Okay. And of course, just like with graphs and homomorphisms, right? Um, we can have we can have homomorphisms of of these discrete dynamical systems. So here's one on the left and here's the one on the right. And the homomorphism between these stays true to the structure on the right. It doesn't violate it. It doesn't run afoul of it. It has fidelity to it, but it can coarse grain. And I'd say this one on the right is like a coarse grain version of it. It's as if you zoomed out and you Imagine some of these things on the left, these states kind of merging together. They get really far from you and they look almost like they're the same. So which states have been merged by this one on the right? This is just one homomorphism, but it's 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 a valid one. What, which ones have been merged in this one on the right that were distinguished by this one on the left? Mm -hmm. I've coded again where the morphisms came from. So this one on the right, what is R? Which ones got collapsed down to R? It's A, B, C, and D. A, B, C, and D. Which ones are incorporated into a capital I here? Uh, I. I. And why is this blue going from capital R to capital R, whereas here it goes from A to B? Because what? Because A got mapped over here by the functor into what? Into R. By the homomorphism into R, into R, and B got mapped into uh, R, so it has to go from R to R, right? Yeah. And, and same thing with red. And same thing with magenta, and same thing with green. Uh, so, uh, because uh, can we say because all of uh, vertex uh, mapping to the R? Yeah, I mean, uh, well, A, B, C, D all map. All these these are actually states here. They're not vertices, really. I mean, we're kind of illustrating it with a graph, but these are yeah. states of the system, right? I this is this. a dynamical system. We just happen to draw it out this way. All of these states of the dynamical system got mapped to one state here. They yeah, all got I collapsed mean, down. I yeah. Mean, mm -hmm. Yeah. What's that? My means was uh, uh, my means was that, but I yeah. I didn't know how to uh, how should I say. My means was yeah. uh, all of them uh, mapping to R. Right. Right. That's right. So here, 
like if if we thought about how this dynamical system operator would go from A, I to A to B to C to D, and then A, C, and, and so on, um, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. Now, you may think this one on the right looks different, but it would go from I to R, and then R and R and R and R. And that's, you know, the same as you would get from doing it over here and for each state reporting what state it goes to. I goes to I. So imagine that this one on the right, it didn't tell you the full information about what state it was. It just told you what it would map to over here. So, uh, you know, it says I'm in the equivalent of capital I. I'm in the equivalent of capital R. 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 I'm in. So it's like this one. It's 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 just like the behavior of this, just summarized or aggregated or you know um, abstracted. But it behaves totally consistently with how this would behave as summarized. By this mapping, do you see that? Do you, do you get that flavor here of what this homomorphism is giving? Yeah, it makes sense. Yes, and and yes. the functors capture these homomorphisms. So there's a category of discrete dynamical systems, and you can have these functors. Uh, sorry, you can have these morphisms between them, which are dynamical system homomorphisms. You know, where one goes to the other. And not all of these are connected to every other one. No, 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 no. They're they're very special things. They're it's not any willy-nilly mapping. It's 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 a you know, it's a special honoring mapping, structure preserving mapping. But they link up dynamical systems, you know, some will have homomorphisms to particular others and so on. And and we can just zoom out and and think about each of these as a dot. This is a dot. We don't have to think about all the details of encoding it with this, but when we need to encode it, we we can. And it's the same thing with pre-orders, et cetera, with monotone maps and, you know, but with pre-orders, homomorphisms, and as captured by functors are monotone maps where, you know, if you have two pre-orders, you can, you can um, relate what the, by transitivity where you can get to and map that over, or you can map over and and follow it here. And in order for it to be a homomorphism, it has to be a monotone map. In other words, things here have to map, you know, if you have two things here, one is less than, one is below, you know, one is a path up to another, then it has to map over in a way that has a path up up to that, right? So two can map to four, Three can map to six, and and that will be an an order preserving map. Three could not map to two. Then there wouldn't be there'd be a path here um, from two to three, but no, not over here. And so these are structure preserving mappings. This category is true to this structure. It encodes this structure could be in a coarser grained way where several of these map to the same thing, or it could be in a way that has lots of other components in it, but it, it stays true to the structure. If, if a two is less than or equal to three here, it's mapping is less than or equal to three, two's mapping is less than or equal to three's mapping. Do you see that? Same thing for this guy here is a monotone map. If we look at size of these sets, it's a monotone map. You know, this is it's like with subset. Zero three is a subset of this, but if we just pay attention to the size, we can get a pre-order. And turns out that's a, a a monotone map. Contains two is a monotone map. If we think of the category of sort of truth values, false and true, as true being greater than f, you know, then contains true. Is a monotone map. Things that are higher in this category go to things higher in this category, which is kind of cool. You don't really think of Booleans normally as having structure, but you, you can and should commonly. And you get this monotone map between them. 
Is size greater than or equal to three? Is a monotone map. Is uh, is set size even? Um, uh, it is it, so. This is a non-monotonic map. This is a monotone map. This is not an um, uh, a monotone map because as you go up, you can get some things lower which are even, and then some things higher up which are not even. And this is not preserving. This is not preserving the fact that if this guy is less than this guy, less than or equal to this guy on the left hand side, is judged by set inclusion that it goes less than or equal to on the right. This one kind of scrambles, it maps them to different sort of levels, it reverses it. It's not monotonic map, right? Um, yeah, I think that's all we'll, we'll do today. I, I hope that's helpful in thinking through some of these issues with um, functors and, and thinking through you know, these levels of abstraction and zooming out and even though it's it's a lot to keep in mind, this kind of initially this functor from a schema category to sad. I know it's you know it might might seem like a lot to keep in mind for a given dynamical system. Often we zoom out and we just deal with the abstraction of it and we reason at that level. But we always know we can encode it. And it turns out those C sets, those co pre sheaves are going to be super useful. And when we get to natural transformations, we'll see um, how they, they play a role there. And they'll play a big role in our computational epidemiology. Okay, so that's all we have time for tonight. Thank you so much. Uh, and I will look forward to seeing you Thursday. And on Tuesday, I'll look forward to seeing you in the classroom in person. Okay, thanks for bearing with the difficult situation. Thanks for the condolences. And I will look forward to seeing you Thursday. I will hold office hours Thursday, uh, nine, 9 to 10, Saskatchewan. So if you'd like to uh, join then at the same URL, I'd be glad to, to talk through a lot of these issues. Okay? Thank you, everyone. Take care there.